All right, guys, welcome to the WWE podcast. We are here tonight with Michael Gross. He has not been on the show in, I don't know, four, five, six months. Too long is really the bottom line. And tonight he's here to talk about the current state of the WWE, a very, very brief review on, on WrestleMania, the, main, the big two matches of the main events for each night, but really diving into Monday Night Raw. And as always, a very intelligent and uh, insightful response from Mr. Gardner himself. So get ready. The Monday Night Raw review starts right after this. Are you tired of listening to the same music every day? Or are you a small artist and trying to grow your audience? Try checking out Accent. Accent is a brand new app that helps artists and fans connect by finding good matches. Fans of a popular artist can now find similar small artists that are perfect for them. And artists can easily find new listeners that will love their style. Thanks to Accent, it has never been easier for artists and fans to find each other. If you want to find your new favorite artists or market your own music, download Accent today. Search for Accent Promote Small Artists on iOS and Android devices or visit the website at AccentPlatforms.com. Again, search for Accent Promote small artists on iOS and Android devices or visit their website at accentplatforms.com. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The The one that everybody wants me. Says I just whipped your ass. This is my You're Alright everybody, welcome to the Monday Night Raw review here on the WWE Podcast. We have got Mr. Michael Gross with us. He'll be joining us in just a minute or two, but I want to first welcome you and thank you everybody for making this show such a success and continuing to rise up the charts and I want to also invite you if you just you, you heard the beginning of the show and you're like, oh, my God, all these ads, so many ways that you can get rid of them, the rid of those ads for a extremely minimal cost. I'm talking a dollar less than a dollar for an entire month gets you ad free access on our Apple podcast subscription. You just click ad free on our page on Apple podcast directly on the app. You can go to our website at wwpodcast.com and go VIP. That includes not just audio ad free everything, but also exclusive VIP um, audio, and you can go on patreon.com slash WWE podcast for a dollar. It gets you into the uh, Patreon family for hundreds of ad free shows, plus our exclusive after dark show that I just dropped a couple of days ago. And boy, was it a bit spicy, <laughs> a bit spicy. Uh, after dark is uh, not for the family. It's very, very much an adult show, but that's included uh, at the base tier for your subscription on Patreon for just a dollar. Uh, so I really encourage you to go check that out. But I know a lot of those ads, I I get it. They're, 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 they're tough. Sometimes you just want to listen to wrestling, but got to pay the bills, as I say, and you can uh, support the show that way, or you can just give us a five-star rating. And that's, that's also a thing or use our Amazon link on our website. If you do any shopping on Amazon, bookmark that link, it kicks back whatever you buy a small percentage to the show. Okay. Infomercial over. Uh, but I do have to plug my stuff guys. Why not? All right. Uh, that said, I'm going to stop yabbering. We're going to talk about Monday Night Raw in the current state of WWE with Mr. Michael Gross back on the show. And I'd encourage you to go and, uh, hit that subscribe button, support us that way too. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'll be back tomorrow night with the mailbag. No Mr. and Mrs. Casual Wrestling fan. I know I'm sad, too. But we'll be uh, doing a full mailbag from start to finish with email and voicemail. So send those in, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. All right, everybody. It is long overdue. We are back with a co-host that you have not heard in months. And I'm really glad to have him back. Michael Gross, Mr. Gardner, is back with us tonight to talk about the current state of WWE and, of course, specifically focusing on Monday Night Raw that took place last night on April 11th. And, Mr. Gardner, how you doing? It's great to have you back. 
I'm doing fantastic. I've missed uh, being on the show. I've missed everybody who listens and getting the feedback and the Twitter uh, interaction and involvement. It's just been insane, but I'm glad to be back and I'm ready to talk a little bit of wrestling whenever you are, man. Yeah, let's do it. I, I you know, we just passed WrestleMania 38. We are now into the post mania hangover season and we are full blast now really looking at SummerSlam as the next massive destination. But before we get look ahead and at the, at the um, event that just took place last night, I want to ask about your thoughts just in general about where you feel and how you feel about WWE. We just passed WrestleMania 38. A lot happened. And without going, you know, match by match, I am curious, though, as to your thoughts on that event and where WWE stands right now. WWE is uh, right, right, right now, I would say, on parallel to about 1992 to 93 um if you haven't read the book series the titan sinking titan shattered titan uh rebuilt or something along the lines can't remember the name of the third that's where we are right now with wrestling um we are about to bottom out and hit an incredibly low spot wrestlemania was wrestlemania um that's a whole other dig if you want to do a three-hour show one day i could really pick it apart i mean hey i'm glad that logan paul gets wins where is he today he's not on the show so hey way to bury somebody out so that's that's how i feel that that e in entertainment keeps going excuse me growing and growing it's overtaking the two w's that were in front of it so um if you guys don't know what i mean it, it just comes down to we're getting more into sports entertainment and less and less into wrestling, and that's really apparent. And Raw tonight is going to be one of those things that I can point out with the reasons why. Well, let me let me ask you. I guess I'm not going to ask you anything about WrestleMania other than just two things. And to me, the biggest two things that took place were the two main events for each uh, night, respectfully. And that is, I, I have to ask again. I, I, we could definitely do a much longer show on this, but your quick thoughts on first Stone Cold Steve Austin returning to the ring after 19 years. Did it make you sad? Did did was it noticeable to you that he was a bit of a step slower and he had a shirt on because clearly he didn't have enough, enough time to to get himself into cardio shape that he wanted? And I I understand that apparently he was only given three months notice. But uh, how did you feel about Stone Cold's return? Uh, how, how much longer are we going to grasp at straws? <laughs> that that's how I felt. I mean, obviously the guy's not in the shape he was. Obviously he's lost a step. Ada, I applaud him for going out and doing a great job at his age, but. It's not going to be a full-time return. All we did was uh, you, you you put a, a star name from the past on today, which is what they do with all these Goldberg returns and everybody else. And obviously Triple H is never going to do it again. What are they going to do? Dust the guy off for Saudi Arabia? Look, there's not too many years that they can keep pulling this trick out of the bag. Good for him for coming back and doing the best he could, especially with someone like Owens, who is a consummate professional and somebody who can put on a great match um, in many different styles. And uh, – if people don't like him, they have to realize that, that Owens did carry a good chunk of that match more than you could ever give him credit for, especially the psychology of it, because you're taking somebody that great and comparing them to the so-called modern day version. And you're still getting a great match out of somebody who's way past their prime and not as physically intimidating as they used to be. And so, what, about, what about the Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar uh, main event a night two? How did you feel about the outcome of that and the quality of that match? Uh, well, the quality was 70%, and uh, the outcome was 70%. Hon uh, honestly and obviously, we all got robbed of what the way it should have been. We all know that Roman Reigns got hurt in real life. His shoulder got torqued, and uh, basically that's why they just kind of had to clean it up as fast as possible. For cleaning it up as fast as possible, it gets an A. Um, but in the psychology and the whole telling the story and going forward, it gets a C+. Plus. And what the payoff could have been had they done it and finished it out the way they wanted to properly. And we'll, you and I will never know how much greater the match could have been and how much more psychological and how much more it could have opened the door and painted a road for us to go down further in either man's direction. We'll never know that because of the way they had to quickly clean it up, but they cleaned it up very clean. So I'll take that from a C plus to a B minus. Um, and honestly, it's one of the very big highlights of the show. But at this point, you can't go back to the well with these guys. It's over. It's done. Leave it. Uh, the fact is, without a world title, you don't know what to do with Brock. And um, without a universal mixed title, you don't know what to do with Roman. So Brock, probably another two-year sabbatical. 
uh, comes back to face uh, Stone Cold. Maybe it'll be a Raw, but I don't know. Stone Cold might go home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take his ball and go home again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but with Roman, uh, you know, the whole going forward and being Shinsuke, you've already tarnished his legacy, and you've tarnished anything he could be with – First losing to Mahal, that you still have that stink from years ago to wash off, then not being taken seriously, then palling around with boogs. Come on. Does anybody take this idea seriously? No. There's ways that things could have been built and forcing that. There, there's so many things that could be done cleaner and better and forcing Nakamura into the situation afterwards um, should have taken a lot of time and you'd have to give him his credibility back and it won't happen in a month, it won't happen in two. It has to happen in a long period of time. So we say, yes, he's Shinsuke Nakamura, the king of strong style, not the king of entertainment style. Yeah, well, so, he he's WWE's resident rock star. Don't forget, that's how they originally introduced so, him. <laughs> and, oh, oh, yes. How could, how could I be such a fool? Yeah. How could I be such a fool? Uh, and, yeah, look, Shinsuke Nakamura is unfortunately, uh, has he's been WWE-ized, and uh, they do not have enough time to build him up as a credible threat. I don't think there anybody in this in, in this world, even if you just started watching pro wrestling, really could believe that Shinsuke would be the one to beat Roman Reigns. So Shinsuke is nothing more than just, ooh, whew, thank God Boogs got hurt because we got, we got an opponent now for Roman because they, I don't think they had a plan. Honestly, I don't think they even thought beyond WrestleMania as a serious, uh, as a serious critical thought of, oh crap, what do we do? And Shinsuke fell into their lap with the Boog's injury, and now Shinsuke is is in position to challenge Roman Reigns for the championship, the Universal Championship. At uh, they didn't make this announcement, but we all know how WWE works at Backlash on May eighth. So, all right, well, let's get to the current product. Of course, sure. you know we we could get much more into WrestleMania for sure, but as we talk about Monday Night Raw, um, the the show open with Cody Rhodes. Now, Cody Rhodes, as you know, as everybody knows, was in AEW. He's one of the co-founders. He was VP, and something fell apart with him and Tony Khan. I don't think that he was really fit to be VP. Whatever the VP actually did, it did not suit Cody Rhodes well, and that, hey, that's fine. I mean, not everybody's meant to be in upper management. He just, whatever whatever roles and responsibilities were in that particular position, what Tony expected, I don't think it was a good fit, and it, it happens. So, uh, you know, there may be other things we don't know about as outside looking in, but he makes his way back to WWE and the worst kept secret in all of pro wrestling for the last couple of months faces Seth Rollins. And now he opens the show here on one of the most overused platforms in all of wrestling of Ms. TV. Can we just, I mean, can we just please do, do away with this? They won't ever because it's an easy show for them to put out there. They can make it anything, but he appears on Cody Rhodes's or uh, Ms. TV and he gets into a, a spat with the Miz that, you know, it, it eventually leads to a match with these two, but what did you think about this segment and the match with Miz and Cody Rhodes? Okay, first of all, I, you know, congratulations, Cody, you came home. Um, the BP thing I won't even touch on because that's another thing I could do days and days and days upon. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I looked at the ratings report today, and, of course, it was drastically down. Gee, you wonder why. Let's start out with the Miz. And then let's do a talk show segment that kills like 15 to 20 minutes where you can have in-ring action with wrestlers, like real wrestlers that you actually might want to see. Um, and the match itself, first of all, do we care that it's the first time they wrestle each other in nine years? No. Can we make it another nine? Yes. Um, hopefully the Miz is out of the business by then. Um, how many times can we mention Dusty Rhodes in a two-hour period or have people wear his shirts? I get it. He's gone. He's dead. Now you can uh, take advantage of that as much as Rey Mysterio and Dominic have to wear Eddie Guerrero stuff. We get it. These people have passed away. Let's not beat a dead horse, and I hate to use that saying because it's not the, the proper one for the situation, but it is. Um, in the context of it all, it was a very scripted back and forth, and I love it when The Miz is trying to like make it look like he's breaking kayfabe, and when he starts to scream and try to hulk up, he looks like such a fool. If, if you really are, you pay more attention not to where you're standing and where what cameras pick you up, but you pay more attention to who you're yelling at. And and if you're really like breaking character and everything, you don't stop when someone puts up their hand. It's just so mm-hmm. garbage. Um, the match itself was mediocre at best because Miz was involved, and you know, gotta love like one of the second weakest finisher in the world in the uh, skull crushing finale right next to the big ending. Um, I mean, the match just existed. It you know, it was out there. It, it happened. Uh, what what I get from it is obviously something's going to happen with the Miz. We don't really care about that. Um, they're building, it's more about the story of Cody Rhodes and what's going to happen with him. And obviously we've got Seth Rollins coming out and uh, adding a lot to this because somebody needed to save the segment. 
And um, I, I love the fact that he went from a Jim Jones character straight into becoming Ed Grimley. And if you guys don't know who that is, please look up Ed Grimley and watch the way he moves. And you'll know he's about two steps away from Pee Wee Herman at this point. Um, and that's that's the bigger underlying story is that this is a conduit to get more time for Rollins and Rhodes to have another match, maybe even better, tear the house down. Um, you'll get an exercise in two wrestlers who can wrestle, two workers who can work. Um, the only thing that I think was really, really funny about the segment as opposed to the match is that um, that that Cody kept using you know, the AEW terms and the real terms, like it's a wrestler, sports entertainer, mm -hmm. the belt, it's a title. Oh, oh yes, because I, I see the direction of this as like, He's supposed to be leading some kind of rebellion of the way it was. Well, if it was, then he wouldn't have never came back. Sorry, folks. I got news for you. This one's going to fall flat on space. Um, and then the other part is with Rollins. Do you notice that? I mean, his character is like, here's another flashback for you from the early 2000s. Kizarni is mixed with Willy Wonka and as much wannabe father james mitchell from wcw and ecw that you can handle that is what that character is and if you don't know what i'm talking about you're either young and if you love me and you love what i say you're gonna look it up on youtube and you're gonna say wow yep that's what i got i like that analogy and i would definitely recommend that you you guys youtube that if you don't know what he's saying it's a, it is a very accurate analogy and I, I will say this about the i was i was glad you brought up the terminology because that's the one thing i was like oh he's he's gonna hit that because <laughs> it, it, it is it, well it also hits our generation like i mean i know you're older than i am but i still was at the part of the generation that you know the word wrestling wasn't a dirty word until vince made it a dirty word uh, you know 15 years ago 20 years ago when you don't oh, know they're they're superstars they're not wrestlers which is the most like just corporatized version of wrestler ever 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 created and, and i don't like that term i still don't like that term you can be a superstar but you earn that title you don't just automatically get that title because you're a wwe wrestler you are a wrestler you are in the ring wrestling professionally and i understand it's on amateur wrestling i'm not even gonna get into that but the word pro professional wrestler to me sounds more legitimate than superstar it just it just sounds better than that even though they've rammed it down our throats for 20 years and so i i knew and when cody said that and then he said said when i you know about the belt and, and miz said well belts hold up pants and it's like, that is such something vince would say i even believe oh, yeah. vince has said that before so it clearly came from vince i believe that was i, I think that was scripted where I don't think it was off the cuff from Cody. I think it was meant to come off like that, and they almost tricked me into that because they're both very, very I think, pretty good at promos. Even The Miz, I don't like The Miz, but at times he can be as convincing as you know the next guy. And I think that they did a good job trying to not make it scripted, as you said, but uh, that was clearly a knock on AEW's professional wrestling that they have implemented more than the sports entertainment version but now that cody's back in the big leagues as they um, i can't wait for somebody to say that oh, yes. you know that's coming oh, too yes. where there somebody's going to say to cody well you're back in the big leagues now like you know that's coming and uh, it's just it's a knock on what aew stands for and what wwe's identity used to be and i think that's what that was a, a part of but as far as this match goes i really didn't have a problem with it it was it was fine it was good i like as much as i hate the miz's character and i i he is the most like unevolved character of all time over the last 15 years like he has not changed nearly at all his sayings his his music his outfit like almost nothing has changed from the miz which is a part of also why i can't stand him i think that this match was fine i mean he doesn't st he, the miz doesn't suck in the ring the miz is he's fine he's okay he's even good at some nights and yeah, he, uh, Cody Rhodes wins after hitting crossroads, and he should win. And then Seth Rollins looks like he's going to do something. He doesn't. But I expect probably a backlash for Cody Rhodes to take a loss to Rollins, which will then lead to the blow off at Hell in a Cell at the following live event. So uh, that's how I see this going. Any final thoughts on that? Um, if he takes a loss, it's too soon. And um, if he does, then I see... Um, if, if, if people are not familiar with Dirty Dutch Mantel, you might know him as Uncle Zeb Coulter. Um, but basically, he's like he was a creative driving force behind many promotions, including WWE, for a long time. Even when they handed him garbage, he could turn it into something great because he's been in the business forever. And with that being said, he was asked about – he thought about the return. He said it's great. It's going to be fantastic. Cody is going to be the big megastar push out the gate. 
and then a year from now he's going to be in the U.S. title scene because Vince wants to rub it in his face. You left me. He said, don't get too too chained to the idea that he's going to be world champ anytime soon. And maybe that's why he signed this so-called really long-term contract because, I mean, people who've been in this business forever and know this business back and forth, they know the attitudes and what they will promise you versus what they deliver. Remember, Bad News Brown was also told he could be the world's first black champion in the WWE, and we see how that happened. Yeah, yeah, really, exactly, exactly, and and I I know that, and I do like at least that they have created a mission statement for Cody. I'm glad that they did that off the bat. And is he leaning a yeah. little bit too much and pulling on the heartstrings of Dusty? Yeah, I, oh. I mean, I, I don't mind if he mentioned it like once and then moved on, but it seems to be like that's that's something I think we're gonna hear over and over and over. Is this is you know this is for my father, the belt he could not he could never win, which actually isn't. Totally true if, if people know their history about the belt that Dusty yeah. won, by the way. Uh, but we'll go with it. Uh, so Dusty Rhodes is, is going to be mentioned many, many, many more times. And I, I at least like they have a direction for Cody. Like, he didn't just come in and he's floundering about. He's with a top-level, top-flight performer of, of of Seth Rollins. You know their matches are going to be really, really good. And you know that eventually it seems as if Cody's going to set his sights on Roman Reigns. And that'll be a fun program and one that is possibly believe that he could he could beat Roman Reigns. He's never faced Roman. There's nobody credible right now enough to beat Roman Reigns outside of Drew McIntyre that I imagine they do at SummerSlam, but we'll see. So I, eventually, so you, my question, my final question on you about Cody is, do you think that Cody Rhodes has any shot of beating Roman Reigns whenever they finally do collide for the belt? Not as long as Veer Mahan has a say so in it. <laughs> that's for you dj kuzma that's for you baby oh see dj yeah. gets shout outs i love it yes <laughs> okay no let's uh, does he have a chance um no uh at least not within the year maybe two years i i just don't see how they can make that happen there's gonna have to be a lot of things behind cody we're talking a win streak of win streaks you can't drop anything and if you do it's by dq or um, a count he cannot be pinned or submit in any way, shape, or form to build up to Roman. I mean, how many more days do we have to tack on that you've been a champion? In my day, it was he's been champion for a year. Wow, that's awesome. I know there's 365 days in a year. I don't need a day ticker, okay? <laughs> um, I, I just don't understand. That's something they started, what, like 10 years ago? It's the modern era. This is I've been champion this many days. Okay, whatever. Small victories. How about a year, year and a half? I like that. It sounds better. It's cleaner. Yes. It seems more more time than 864 days. Like, but will he be champion next week? Well, I don't know. He's 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 wrestling Richie farts a lot. Come on, I think he will be. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, the 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 short answer is no. It, it, that program is going to be at least a year away from now. And who knows? Roman could still be champion then. But if he is, they really are going to have to pull. They're going to have to pull all kinds of miracles out of the magic hat of wrestling to find him credible opponents because they've outright buried everybody or cut anybody that they could have potentially built and put into that position. They are almost out of opponents for Roman. I know that Roman wasn't on yeah. raw and this isn't, you know, a part of the raw talk here, but I, <clears throat> while we're on the subject that that's a big problem. And then I know why I, and many of us did that were that halfway know anything about wrestling knew that what Roman was going to win that match at WrestleMania as he should have, because I don't think Brock Absolutely. is in a position for, to take that win whoever beats roman reigns should be somebody they can build on that should be somebody younger that they can springboard that victory and use it for uh, their next step in their career brock doesn't need any of that uh so my point is though that roman reigns winning that belt people real should realize that they did that so he has a whole nother roster the entire roster now to work with because he has essentially run through the entire gamut on smackdown outside of shinsuke who's going to get steamrolled and why they haven't pulled the trigger on drew mcintyre is probably because they know they have that bullet in the chamber for SummerSlam. outside of that he's run through everybody and they have no one left and they could not get to the next draft until uh in october with this limited amount of opponents outside of recycling the same people so now they've opened up the entire raw roster but even looking at the raw roster you're like well who's on here that's even credible enough to beat him or who's who's actually feasible to come out of maybe a tag team like like uh i guess rated rk or, or not rated rk uh, rk bro randy orton or riddle maybe could but they're running thin of on opponents outside of the rock coming back and even here's the thing 
Even if The Rock came back, I don't want him challenging for the belt. I would want it just kind of a grudge match only because I don't want The Rock to be the one to beat Roman Reigns. And people have been talking about that at WrestleMania 39 in LA and LA next year. I don't want it. I want that match to happen, but not for the belt. That's my problem with that. Well, yeah, it's at that point, well, one, The Rock doesn't need the belt. We, You and I both know that. I mean, his time has come and gone in professional wrestling. Obviously, he's gone to Hollywood, blah, 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 blah. I think we all know this stuff. Um, you can set up that match. That's fine. But that that's that's got to be a special attraction match, and it's going to have to have a good build, so on and so forth. I mean, it's, it's already writing itself, so we don't have to worry about stuff like that. And honestly, and you're going to hear it from my lips right now, if – Roman holds this belt longer than a year, then I think the buildup in the person that they're going to have him finally lose it to, and mark my words, and I know it's got to be in the back of Vince McMahon's mind, Braun Breaker. Yep, I've heard that. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, the thing is, though, while he's still on the uh, NXT roster, he did end up beating Dolph Ziggler. Uh, on Raw last week at the Raw After Mania, that felt like the least important Raw After Mania of all time. But he did beat Dolph Ziggler for the NXT title, and they put him on a big stage to introduce him to the audience that is probably not watching NXT. And so that was good. And I like Braun Breaker. I've heard that name before. I think it's plausible, but they have a lot, a lot of work to do. They need to make him look like, you know, uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ in order to to have him feel like he could beat Roman Reigns within the next year. But I, I absolutely could see in a year. We're talking post-Mania 39. We're all going, holy crap, Roman is still champion. What do we do? Like, I could see that. People are going to lose their minds, but I could see it. Uh, so, all right, well, I, I do want to move on in the interest of time for, for Monday Night Raw here because okay. the good Lord, we could keep going with that. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, AJ's or rather Veer Mahan, speaking of, speaking of the devil here, uh, the, the, the beloved Veer Mahan ends up beating Dominic Mysterio and he beat him. It's called the cervical clutch, I believe is the name <laughs> of his finish. And after that though, he continued the hold on Mysterio and continued it and continued it. The officials had to come out and pull him off. And Mysterio was then uh, taken to the hospital. Um, well, first of all, while this was really nothing of a match, I, I really don't know what to make of Vermahan number one. We don't know much about him other than he's a, a, a very mean, just formidable force as a foreigner, which is not the most original concept of all time as a wrestler. But I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't know a lot about it either. I don't know a lot about him, so I'm going to try not to prejudge it. Um, it is, It seems a bit one-dimensional right now. But him taking out Dominic, I love. Why do I love that? Well, because I don't like Dominic Mysterio, and I'm tired of him on my screen. And I think he is not ready for the big time. His last name can only bring him so far. And I think that he has got a lot of work on promos to do. I think he needs to look the part, maybe bulk up a little bit, and grow some facial hair. I know not everybody needs to look the same, but he looks like he just walked out of, like, you know, his high school senior ball or something. Or, like, you know, he, he looks too – he looks extremely young. And he's fine in the ring. But I'm not a Dominic Mysterio fan from a personality or a looks perspective. And that matters. That matters in pro wrestling. It's superficial, but it matters. So anyway, I didn't hate this only because Dominic got taken out, hopefully for several months. What about you? Um, I, first of all, what's a cervical clutch? You know I could go the bad route with this one, but I'm not going to. <laughs> for, for the sake of this not being after dark, okay? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe that makes that a kudos. That, that could be a topic but of an actually. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to tell everybody else what a real cervical clutch is next time you're on After Dark. Okay? <laughs> All right, sounds good. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I apologize because I've already crossed the line. But let's get down to it. One, I kind of like the name only because I also like old school names of finishers. Not everything has to have some stupid name that's named after the, the wrestler performing it. I'm not a big fan of them renaming um, moves to begin with, like you know, making the, the, the Scorpion Deathlock, the Sharpshooter, so on and so forth. It's a little bit different. Let's go with the cervical clutch. That's fine. Um, I think I would have gone more with a clavicle lock or something. You know, maybe work the word clavicle in there instead of cervical, but whatever. Uh, okay, so you take Dominic out. I agree with you. He looks like a little boy. I don't think he's terrible. I think he's a lot better than a lot of these um, – a lot of people I've seen on NXT who are just god awful, don't know what they're doing. Hey, we signed some real athletes, don't know anything what they're doing, but we'll teach them how to act. Those guys are lost. Mysterio is better than them. However, he belongs in NXT. He belongs uh, down there honing his craft more, carrying on your father's name. Like you said, it can only go so far. 
but you have to be uh, trained for the big stage, the multi cams. That mullet is doing him no favors. Um, the look, everything. It's it's where he is, and his his paying tribute to Eddie is kind of like where Cody is going with his father. Um, but also, it's just the fact that this kid was forced into the wrong position at the wrong time. It, there's a time and a place for everything. His time and place will come. Yes, get him off TV for a while. And somebody told me, and I don't know if this is true, and you might be able to elaborate, that Ray is injured. Well, without Ray, Dominic's not worth anything right now. It's the truth, folks. Until Dominic matures to the point where he belongs on the, uh, on, on the main shows, um, he has to be with Ray or he's, he's not a viable product. And it's not like he's moving a merchandise needle without a mask or anything. So, you know, what do you do with him? Take him off TV if dad's off TV. You know, that, this is a good way to do it. That way he's got a comeback story against v- he, Veer Mahan, which we're going to get into that. First of all, the talented of the duo was Shank Nast. Hey, we all know this, but did they listen to me? No, they went with Veer. Now, here's the thing with Veer. Um, you let him cut a few more promos, and he's going to go from the wannabe Umaga that they're trying to make him into Nikolai Volkov really fast. Um, I mean, he's, he's, his promos make him look like a befuddled fool. Um, I think there's more they could have done with like the face paint. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be Sting or the Road Warriors or anything like that. But it's a little generic, just a little generic. They could have done a little bit more. But I definitely see parallels between he and Umaga, except he's a much more, way more watered down version of Umaga. Um, at least Umaga had Armando Alejandro Alessandro. I think I said that right. And uh, so at least he had a mouthpiece. Um, and and um, Veer does not, and that shows in his promos that, dear Lord, he's not ready to cut a promo. Other routes you can go with him, and I'm pretty good at predictions. I'm going to tell you this much. He's going to turn off hot as the sun, and uh, he looks like he's improved a lot since before, since like when he was just part of you know Jinder Mahal's um, backup and when he was down in NXT, part of that god-awful tag team and everything else. However, this guy, this guy could be your next um, Lars Sullivan. Oh, there's a name I haven't mentioned in a long time. One injury away from being a clown and uh, being released. That's where that's where Veer is, especially with all that time they had to build him. You had to be re- either really bad in the ring that they had to build you, uh, build you up or really bad in a promo that they had to build you up. Or they had to say, eh, do we release him? Well, he's over 6'3". Uh, he's over. He's almost 300 pounds. We could make him buy it. They'll just forget he was a tag team jobber. Mm, I don't know. And he was only a jobber, though. I guess, Well, he was. And he was a, a forgettable character with... Uh, with, with Jinder Mahal, the thing is, he was there for a, like so short of a period of time that a, a lot of fans probably did forget him. He was extremely forgettable, and it's not like he was established as a jobber for many years. It was very quick. So there is that going for him. I think this that that is hopefully a non-factor for him. But he, yeah, that is funny. That the comparison to Omaga, it's kind of true. Like, I, and I, he doesn't say a whole lot. He just kind of grunts and makes mean faces. And he'll need a mouthpiece. Maybe like you said, Armando. I think it was Armando Estrada. I think that was who it was. Um, who did manage uh, Umaga, which was, I think, Rosie in Three Minute Warning prior yep. to that. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, he'll need a, a, a mouthpiece eventually. We'll see how long this takes uh, to to actually you know, get a mouthpiece, but also to see how long the squash matches continue, which is likely how this path is going to go. That he's oh, just yes. going to get squash match, squash match, squash match. I mean, that's just that's the, the WWE way when they introduce somebody like this and. Again, I have no problem with with that. I mean, maybe they they do something different, but I have a feeling it's going to be kind of the Braun Strowman type of uh, introduction. He just constantly, I, I want more competition, right? Like, uh, yeah, fine. Okay, well, let's uh, let's move on here to AJ Styles and Damian Priest here, and this ended in a no contest, and it was ended in a very weird way. And why it ended, I don't know, but it was at least on television. This is how it ended: is that. Uh, Priest kicked Styles off the ring apron, and then he kneeled in the center of the ring, and the lights went out, and this blue light started shining down on him, and then the, the everything just just stopped. Like he just they just went to commercial break, and they came back, and they're like, "Oh, the match ended." It's like, well, how? Just because of, like did the referee just decide? Yeah, I guess that's over. I mean, the, the the logistics of this, I guess, we're not supposed to care about because it's the presentation, and I understand that. But it was very illogical of how it just decided. The referee's like, yep, yep, I'm out. Uh, no contest. 
I don't know why, but fine. Uh, so Damian Priest, who is aligned with Edge, Edge didn't make an appearance, though, which is weird, but Damian Priest, who's a, now an acolyte or a disciple of Edge, and it gives him a direction. I got to say, this is a better direction for Damian Priest than wallowing in the ether of whatever the hell he was doing before, back and forth, and he was supposed to be a babyface, but people are booing him and all this stuff. He has a direction with one of the greatest of all time in Edge, and, and that's a good thing. But it, it, this was weird. Um, there was a no contest. What did you think about this match? Well, I, I, I figured it out. And um, so God has only made two appearances in WWE prior to this. This is when he stood up Shawn Michaels in the tag match, okay? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And then there was when he interfered in the Demon Balor's match because he's a demon. He doesn't like demons. It cost him that match against Roman. And now he's like, I don't like AJ because he's a Christian, but I heard he – Maybe he messed around on his wife once or something. Who knows? So he's got to teach AJ that, you know, you got to pray a little bit harder if you're going to beat Damian Priest. So he was backing up Damian Priest. I don't know what that was. I really do not know what that was. And lights come on and off all the time. You look back to the retribution when all of a sudden the lights would all go weird, but people kept wrestling. They just didn't stop and be like, oh, that's the match. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's so silly to me that it's, okay, let me, that's that E superseding the w in wwe that's that entertainment and forget the wrestling it, it i've never seen a match just let's throw somebody out and change the lights and call it a day it, you don't even have a situation like okay we look back to the nwo wcw era you could say well sting was in the rafters and everything all the lights uh, uh, mysteriously shut off, and all of a sudden there's a spotlight on Hogan, and you see Sting up there with his baseball bat. They're calling the match because obviously it looks like Sting's going to interfere. Okay, he's making his presence known. We have no presence known. We have no reason, no basis, no idea of what could happen or who did this. It's Let's just put a spotlight on him. I, I just don't get it. That that one blew my mind. And was it Edge? Who's, who's Edge helping? Is it Christian? Hmm? Another defection? I don't know. So maybe it's the Edgeheads. Oh, please, God, no. The Edgeheads. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that in term in a while. But, yeah, look, the the weirdest part about this is not even the fact that it just doesn't make sense. The referee would just be like, yep, this this is over. Uh, but beyond that is I thought this, this character was not told to us that it had magical powers like Undertaker. I mean, all of a sudden – he kneels and, and, and the lights just uh, just bend to his will and everybody. I mean, all I mean, it was weird. I didn't Edge's character was not built around having wacky superpowers and therefore they shouldn't be transferred to Damian Priest. And all of a sudden, Damian Priest is like, yep, uh, I've got a little witchcraft going on here. I'm going to add that to my gimmick. It's just like, no, that 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 that's not how this this uh, this this unholy alliance came together. There was nothing, in fact, that had anything to do with any kind of hocus pocus. But now that's been added. So, uh, look, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, AJ Styles is at least out of a tag team, and he's working with Edge. Yes, Damian Priest is the, the side effect here, but really Edge, which, I mean, I have really have no problem with AJ Styles versus Edge. None. I think it's yeah. a great pairing. I think th- they're, they're two of the like most professional men in, uh, in, in pro wrestling in the world. They have decades between them of experience. There's no problem there, and I have no problem in the not only the rivalry with these two, but also the quality of the matches that are about to happen, likely at Backlash and probably co- uh, consummating in Hell in a Cell. I think it's probably going to go three matches, just like Seth and Cody. But, um, yeah, any final thoughts on this? Well, if if they could sidebar this into Damian doing his own thing, because he really does not need to be interjected into an Edge and AJ Styles program. You could use Edge as the catalyst why Damian Priest just has turned his back on everybody. Grow into more of a lone wolf, but not a stone cold character. The character that Baron Corbin was originally supposed to be in, but he can't speak and can't do anything anywhere near as good as Damian Priest. And have him develop his character um, as basically a man who trusts nobody and a man who aligns with nobody. Um, eventually, if you do it right and you don't just feed him squash matches, you let him wrestle at his size and what he can do, maybe he could be the one facing Roman Reigns in a year too. You just have to get him away from the program he's currently in, and you have to find credible opponents, that, and you can't just have him eat them alive. Because that the squash match way of doing things is just – it's it's not happening. But when you look at Damian Priest's losses, he doesn't have embarrassing losses. The only thing he has is embarrassing allegiances with Bad Bunny and then being a lackey for Edge. It's not embarrassing to be assi- uh, associated with him. It's embarrassing to be 
a lackey and seen as the same light as Kurt Hawkins and Zach Ryder. I think that was the other edgehead. I mean, people who I think should never even put on a pair of boots and be in wrestling to begin with. Okay. Yep. So I'm just going to say it like this. Jake, the snake had this, this power in him. And it was like, basically he was such a great heel and so great at what he did and cut such great promos. You believed him that the fans just started cheering him. It's organic. That word you and I love this could happen with priest. If he has the right writers and if he continues to only have top notch opponents and have good storylines, uh, he could be the person you, you believe it because his losses right now haven't been bad. You know, you have a loss to Balor. He was the first universal champion. And if that, if he wouldn't have gotten injured, he would have had an unparalleled push that would still have him top tier instead of second level. And I mean, I, I do see a lot of potential in priest. And if anything, I want to see him win out of this situation. Be an associate of Edge. Tag with Edge once in a while, but be your own man and eventually go off. That doesn't mean they have to face each other. Just split off quietly. There are ways to do it. Yeah, I I, I agree. And Damian Priest, too, also has one of the best speaking voices I've ever heard. He's a very deep, (sighs) commanding voice. He's got the voice that Vince McMahon wishes he could transplant to Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, yes. as, as great as Brock is, his voice does not match the, the the absolute monster that he is. He's got kind of a very high pitched voice. So if you could transfer Damian Priest's voice, like you know Little Mermaid or something, and like Ursula steal the voice and then transplant it into uh, Brock Lesnar, I mean that would be the ultimate uh, pro, uh, the ultimate combination of beast and and sounding like a beast. Uh, yes. so, but so Damian Priest though just i gotta say is is got such a not only commanding and deep and and just you pay attention but it's just the way he uses his voice he knows he's got he's got like a great voice for radio too on top of it i don't know oh, like yes. it's there's such an asset that i don't hear anyone talking about that and i think it's one of those that we just kind of take for granted but he could he is very convincing when he speaks i believe him when he speaks and uh, so that's another asset for Damien that he's got going for him. But all right, we're going to get to something even more important, and that is the the uh, the younger brother of Elias. <laughs> oh, God. God. One of the talking points of last week, not for a good reason. But he comes back this week, and Ezekiel introduces himself to, some, to Tommaso Ciampa. He insists that he is the younger brother of Elias. Ciampa was kind of willing to go with it, and then Kevin Owens showed up to object. I mean, this wasn't a match. It was a very quick segment. But what yeah, are your thoughts? But... Okay, guys, you're going to hear it from me first. This Ezekiel thing is going to fall flat on its face, and he'll be on the Indies, Impact, or whatever else, probably in a year. This this reeks of we don't know what to do. And he looks so much smaller than he did when he was Elias. Am I m- mistaken on that? No, like he body size? Yeah. He looks about 20 pounds lighter, which whatever. I mean, that was one of the big things is Elias was originally known as Elias Sampson because he was supposed to – be like Samson, da 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 da, the mythical. I mean, the guy was like pushing 300. He looks like he's pushing like 240 at this point. And maybe I don't know. Maybe all that time off, he he trimmed down could be better for his cardio. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this segment. This is another one that makes you go, why? What are you thinking? And let's let's waste Tommaso Ciampa, um, who we all know could be the best heel in the business. Um, let's. We don't know what to do with Kevin Owens, so let's just take some noodles, throw it against the wall. Hopefully it sticks. And uh, Elias, Ezekiel, what other names uh, can we throw in there? Esquire the third. Um, it's it's like the second he stepped away, all of a sudden they found Rick Boogs. It's like if if the fact that the guy never wrestled but somehow got over just by saying walk with me and played a guitar that no one wanted to hear, Vince had to turn it up and say let's take a guy who barely can wrestle – when he's there and force him down your throat with Shinsuke and make him be the mouthpiece. If you didn't like one, you're really going to hate the other. It's like the parfums decor version. And then you bring him back under a pseudonym in an angle that is just going to blow up. And eventually it's going to be one of those. Ha ha ha. I was just joking. It was me all along when it's like, this isn't like Bruce Wayne and Batman. This is just really bad. This is just really bad. Creative. <laughs> It looks like I mentioned this last week, and, it, and it's just it still has rung true with me. It looks like he is a guy right off the Indies, like he just he just walked out of an event at the Indies, and he's trying to look like a pro wrestler, or he's trying to yes. look what he feels like Vince would want to see. 
this big guy in just kind of plain trunks, uh, some, you know, kind of slick hair. Just he looks like an indie guy. He's regressed in his look. And there are also certain guys that just need a beard. They just need facial hair. It doesn't look right. They look like a child or they just look deformed some way that they, if they don't have facial hair. And yes, we have seen Elias with facial hair for years. So that is also part of it that you're like, well, that's striking. But eventually you get used to it. I'm not used to it. Is he, like Elias no, does not no. look right without facial hair. It's bizarre. It's not as it's I wouldn't say it's bizarre as bizarre as uh, Shawn Michaels shaving his head, which I still can't get out of my head. It like <laughs> haunts me with Shawn Michaels with bald head. I mean, I, that match with uh, Triple H and, and Brothers of Destruction, <laughs> that that to me, not only was a match just god-awful, as everyone knows, even Triple H made fun of it, it, it just is is uh, strikingly uh, disturbing to see Shawn Michaels without hair. Uh, so it's not quite that, but it, it is just, it doesn't look right. I'm like, something is off. Are you What is missing? And Yeah, your beard, but you don't look right. You don't look like, you don't look healthy or something without a beard. I don't know. Uh, so there is that too. And, and uh, look, Kevin Owens goes from Stone Cold Steve Austin to working with an indie guy like essentially i mean you talk about a fall off a cliff and and then then you have like this weird tweener polarity you don't know if kevin's a face a heel he's giving austin all the props in the world and wearing a dusty shirt but yet he's calling out ezekiel who didn't do anything to anybody nothing he he hasn't harmed a fly but yet let's let's just criticize i know who you are i know those eyes well we know that face and that body well at least a little bit smaller version of that body this is just one of those things that you're going Okay, so you you called up Tommaso Ciampa for this, and Kevin Owens is – you signed him to this huge contract to make sure he didn't go to AEW so he could go back to being Kevin Steen for this? Yeah. Oh, dear. All right. Okay. Let's, let's move on. I, I agree. Like, I mean, I hope we're both wrong. I, re- I truly hope we're both wrong. Sometimes weird things happen, and this could get over by itself. Maybe the fans kind of grab onto this, and it, it becomes a thing, and it, it has a life of its own. I hope we're wrong, because I want guys to get over, but as it's presently uh, constituted, uh, it, it's not good. All right. Uh, Naomi defeats Liv Morgan is next, of course, with uh, the obligatory roll-up. And, uh, I mean, I don't have much to say about this. No it, thoughts. No, no thoughts. I, I really have there. nothing. Yeah. yeah. It, so, was, it was there. <laughs> it was just there. Uh, it was there. <laughs> okay. Uh, MVP then came out. And he explained why he turned on Bobby Lashley. And it was in the VIP lounge. Lashley, he was in the ring. He said he wants answers. MVP and Omas came out. And MVP said that uh, he claimed all credit for Lashley's success and said Lashley didn't or Lashley saying he didn't need him at WrestleMania proved it was time for him to move on and then Lashley vowed to uh, run through Omos and then go after MVP. What did you, what do you think about this segment and just kind of the the turn of MVP in general aligning with Omos? Um I get it because Omos is lost without AJ Styles. We we all know that. We all saw that one coming. Um and Bobby Lashley was just so good and so dominant that, of course, he was naturally transitioning into a face. And everybody he was going against, especially in the Brock Lesnar situations and everything else, everybody's cheering for Bobby Lashley. And everybody knows that legitimately he could basically snap anybody in half. And I wouldn't say he'd snap Brock Lesnar in half, but I'd love to see the two of them in a shoot. Love to. So if if you're going to have... Lashley's backstabbed. It has to be uh, by the next big thing, which they, they believe Omos is. Omos is still incredibly green, folks. This is why he's not wrestling. This is why he's on MVP lounge segments. Um, this is why when he was in his tag matches, he was with AJ Styles. This is why he only had, what, a five-minute match at WrestleMania? Mm-hmm. Six? Okay, there's there's a reason to it. And um, they're still protecting this guy, but there's a limit. There is definitely a limit of time before of how long you can protect before you, you just have to wash your hands. I mean, you look at what, who, who was it? General Z's, those those yawners that, that they put on, those botched, oh, the hard cams over here. Turn this way. Now show your grimace. And if anybody can make Omos look legit or at least work with him, it's going to be MVP because obviously he can still wrestle. He can be a great player coach, much the the way he was with um, the way he was with the hurt business. I'm not a fan of breaking it up because I think that they had something unique, and they had something really awesome. You know, with a huge nod to Bobby Heenan and Nick Bockwinkle in there, um, with a little bit of JJ Dillon, Ric Flair in there. I loved it, 
And um, I, I, I hated seeing it break up, but I really hate it now. I don't think Lashley is still strong enough on promos to be without him. And um, where's the program going to go? Unfortunately, I see 50-50 booking, and somehow they're going to give it to Omos, but I don't think it's going to be a good-looking match. If it goes beyond the six, seven-minute mark without major interferences, it's going to be one of the worst matches we see coming uh, down the road. And um, I, I just want better things for Bobby Lashley. Of course, you could always revisit Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns because I believe he could snap Roman Reigns in half. Um, so there, there's another person that could be credible as long as you you keep him in main event style uh you and i've always talked about wrestlers who do not need a belt people like yeah i know i said belt guys i didn't say championship people like the fiend he was too much he didn't need it because he was just that great and if people say well wait a minute that's your top thing you that's what everybody has to have look at how many times the undertaker held the belt and how many times and how long if you combine it he held actually had reigns it was very short it was I don't want to say he was a transitional champion, but it's because we can put it on him for six months until we find somebody else because he is so awe-striking and so important. He doesn't need to have that belt around his waist. Um, so you, we, we talk about like characters like that, and I, I look at people like Lashley is someone who can go either way, but he has to wrestle people who don't need the belt. He, ha- he, can't, he can go against a Seth Rollins. That's good. Because they can work programs without it being for a championship, and you still care about that storyline. You can go against Kevin Owens in the right light as long as he's not doing goofy stuff, and we can care about that. But if you work him in these programs with Omos and then Veer Mahan and whoever else, if he goes and has a program against Roman down the road, you're not going to believe in the character. Okay. It was a lot to say, but I got it out. I didn't think he had that much about the segment. Well, good. that's good. No, I... I <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I my my analysis on this isn't going to be as as lengthy. But it's a little more, little bit more straightforward, I guess, simplistic only because uh, of time. But that said, uh, this segment, you know, this was fine. I, I really don't hate Bobby Lashley and Omas. I don't. I I think it's I think it's fine for Lashley to be in this right now. I think it's more beneficial for Omas to be in here. Lashley doesn't need this. Omas does, and they're trying to build a new star. That's fine, and they should be. Uh, I think that Omas and the next uh, the next match they have will probably win, just as they started the Seth and Cody program at WrestleMania, and likely Seth is going to win the next one. A lot of things that over that really started at WrestleMania, which you don't see a lot. Usually they end at WrestleMania rather than start. But in this yeah. case, we had two or three programs that started at WrestleMania. Very, very, uh, I guess, out of character for them. But Lashley in Omas, you know the kind of match you're going to get. It's not meant to be viewed as a five-star classic. It, it will never be, and it's it, that's not the purpose of this match. The purpose of it is, can Omas get revenge? Can Bobby Lashley get a second victory? And what are going to be the feats of strength from Bobby Lashley? Can he get a running power slam? On uh, on on uh, on Omas, can he do it? I mean, the feats of strength from Bobby are going to be fun to watch, um, and also the progress of Omas in the ring. That's the purpose. If anybody's looking at this, going, well, the match is going to suck. Well, yeah, if you're looking at it from the perspective of Seth versus Cody, this is not. It's a different animal. You can't look at it through that lens, or of course you're going to be disappointed. Not every match needs to be that style of match. Sometimes you can have these clunky, just big powerhouse guys that just hit big move after big move, and that's good. I'd like for variety in the type of matches i get and the layout of matches so that's what this is it's going to be just this kind of this big and somewhat clunky uh hopefully no botches and just can lashley take him out and, and get his hands on mvp i mean that's essentially the narrative here and i i i'm i'm i don't like i don't hate this and i'm looking i'm almost looking forward to it i'm i'm cool with it um but all right the next segment here wasn't a match either, but uh, it was Austin Theory announcing that he would now, God help me, now just be known as Theory. And oh, he gosh. said that Vince McMahon decided Austin, quote, did not suit him. Now, I would imagine that saying saying that Vince truly believes that. I don't think, I think that's kind of a shoot. I don't think that that's a work that he took that Austin name away because of the maybe people thinking, oh, wait, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin is there should only be one Austin in this company. Right. So it clearly is the reason for it is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think they didn't say that, but that's clearly the reason. But now just being known as theory, like how many times I would love to go down the list of stars over the last five years that they've chopped names off of. 
it's got to be like 20 names long where they've just they came in as this like Andrade Cien Almas and then Andrade. I mean, you go down the list. Antonio Cesaro just became Cesaro. Cesaro. Yeah, I mean, like you go down. I'm sure I'm missing a lot, but they've just and Alexander yes. Rusev. How's he doing? Yeah, yeah. They just they're like eh, yeah, that first name sucks. You're just gonna be known as this. So you do theory, realize like, Matt six Riddle. months six months ago on this show, I said. You better enjoy it now because sooner or later he's going to chop off that Austin and make you just theory. I said it on this Did you? show I believe last you. summer. Yes. I believe you. Yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. I, I don't know how much more to say on this other than, yeah, well, I, I, number one, I believe you. I, I vaguely recall that. And um, it, it is clearly the Austin thing. And now I'm looking at it and like, Matt Riddle to me comes to mind. Yeah, Matt Riddle. It's no yes. longer Matt Riddle. It's just Riddle. Now no longer Austin Theory, just Theory. So we have uh, we have a Riddle we have to solve. We have a Theory we have to contemplate. <laughs> like, what? what like, like, this is so bizarre. Like, I, I don't know. So continue. No, it, it okay. Uh, I think the other thing that really gets my goat and makes me laugh really, really hard is the fact that I have seen at least two different credible news sources and uh, at least one vlogger on YouTube, I won't mention the site, have all talked about that Vince is so out of touch and so senile. And I remember this like from well over a year ago. That he is just realizing now that Austin Theory is not Shane. Uh, was it Shane Thorne from? Um, uh, he was he was a part of Retribution. He was part of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he thought they were the same person. That's why he was pushing him. And well over a year ago, it was in the news how he was really big on that character. Now, if if you research it, Shane when he was Shane Thorne in the Mighty Don't Kneel, uh, their original tag team that was on the Indies before they became what was it TM Thirty or something like that, TM Sixty, um, in NXT, and then of course. Uh, they broke up, and Miller, I think, went over to New Japan, and he stayed on, and he got put in that whole retribution debacle that was just a train wreck. Um, Vince was really high on him. He was high on him and uh, Dijakovic, and now he's just realizing they're not the same person. This is – this like – Two credible news sites and one credible uh, uh, YouTube vlogging site, wrestling site, okay? They have all said this, like, he's confused. That could also be part of the theory. But <laughs> no pun intended. But, yeah, it, that, that's another thing. Like, it's just so stupid to change the names. Just, ugh. And, um, like, the, Walter Gunther, anybody? How's Butch doing? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, people, sorry. Yeah. I have, you know I'm going to throw him in there when I can. Uh -huh. But, yeah, that, it, it's just silly. And if it's true, it's funny because uh, – Shane Thorne um, is he's he's a very similar wrestler to Austin Theory. The only thing you get more with Theory is Theory's a little bit younger, but uh, Shane is a very polished wrestler. And I'm used to watching him as a tag team wrestler, which he was he was phen phenomenal. So I'm curious to see what he does as a single. And if he's really good, all of a sudden Vince is going to realize, oops, yeah, I got to go back to my original plan. So you know, but I, I like Austin Theory so much, I'm still going to call him Austin Theory, just like I call Matt Riddle Matt Riddle. It's just one of those things. I hope it, there's a payoff, but I got a feeling now that WrestleMania is over, he's going to flounder in the Tyler Breeze uh, role of just taking selfies and being there. It's sad to say. I, it's also, without Vince McMahon yeah. pushing him, they haven't built enough character. They haven't. They haven't. And it, it, to me, it's also kind of emasculating that they – said that Vince McMahon is the reason that that Austin Theory has to cut off his first name. Like, why wouldn't they at least write this in as if Austin Theory comes on and, and makes it a decision himself to change his name? Like, how does Vince have the ability when you think about it? If I if, if you know, if I come in and my name's Austin Theory, I'm, say I'm Austin Theory and I'm like, no, that, that's that's my real name. Like, how does M Vince McMahon have the ability and how emasculating is it to just say, OK, Vince, I'll, I'll, I, I don't have a first name anymore. Like, we're supposed to believe these are wrestlers that are coming in as they are and who they are. How does Vince have the ability, at least in storyline, to do this? I mean, and, and also, like, again, you could have just had Austin Theory come on and, and say and owned it himself and saying after what Austin did I'm disgusted to share the same name with Stone Cold Steve Austin I'm just going to be known as Theory now like he could have at least just done that and, and dove into his heel character more not even wanting to be associated with a scumbag like Stone Cold Steve Austin he could have just said that instead they have to emasculate him by saying Vince decided that the Austin name didn't suit him like it's his father I mean like it, I, I don't know um, but 
Uh, any, it's dumb. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let, let's move on. Uh, Bianca Belair then defeated Zelina Vega with the KOD. This match was very quick, very yes. decisive, sadly decisive if you're a Zelina Vega fan and, and really mm-hmm. showed you where they feel Zelina Vega belongs in the pecking order of the women's division, which I have never been a proponent of. I think Zelina Vega could be and should be at, at some She's point. Top tier. Yeah. Top oh, tier. she is top tier talker. She's a great worker. Her gimmick is a little bit uh, one dimensional with the queen thing yes. i mean that that could go away i think there's more to her than what they're putting on her with winning the queen's crown last year that they won't call queen of the ring for some weird reason uh and so that to me but by the way if, again if you're not a bianca belair fan and you're a Zelina vega fan this was very disheartening and it is one of those statement matches of like yep uh Zelina vega belongs way down here and bianca belair is way up here so what did you think about this exactly what you just said <laughs> um, the, the only thing that I thought was really comical was Zelina Vega being upset and they go to pan to her backstage talking and she's talking then she stops and then she puts on the royal accent which is something I talked about last year which <laughs> they should have done with um, Apollo Crews to, to parody it like I'm just doing this to make you guys mad because really I'm not British or I'm not Nigerian or whatever else um, that's the only thing I liked about this whole thing was that quick little okay i'm gonna fake it for the crowd kind of thing aside from that i mean she's tria trinidad, tria, tia trinidad her real name she is so incredibly talented i mean just she is top tier maybe it's because she's so much smaller but they still put the woman's strap on alexa bliss before and alexa bliss made it work alexa bliss like i said is second tier um in her work she's not quite you know the sasha charlotte level but um but entertaining now before people say, well, I hate the entertainment, cutting promos and believing a character bliss can do. Now, when they give her the supernatural stuff, no, no one can pull that off. It's just inane. It's garbage. But does she buy into the character when you don't do all that? Yes. And can she make the character an actual character and separate from Alexa? Yes. So that's why I see those things with somebody like Alexa. Maybe that's why she got world championship pushes. Um, but as far as Zelina goes, it's very disheartening. Bianca continues to do her same Bianca matches. I get that you're really strong, but doing those, I mean, you've got like the smallest female competitor above your head and you're just doing mini dips while you've got her in the gorilla press position. Save that for a Haas woman. Save that for Rhea Ripley above your head. Okay. It just, it it doesn't compute. It's like, best way I can put it is a long time ago, WCW, Lex Luger, when he was getting his world title push against Hogan, they talked about every week, who could he rack? Well, last week he he racked Scott Norton, but this week can he rack Juventud Guerrero? Isn't Juventud Guerrero 160 pounds? If he can't, there's a problem. I can rack Juventud. (laughs) So if she's going to pull out the power moves, you don't do it on a small person. Um, Of course, this sets up Sonya Deville. Now, First of all, have you noticed Sonya Deville's face is looking very plasticky? She wears a lot of makeup. A lot of makeup. Way too much. Way too much. Um, And I don't know what Sonya's in-ring ability is like at this point. Now, maybe all this time she's taken off was because she was mediocre in the ring and she wants to be top tier and she's been honing her craft. If so, cool. Now we've got a storyline all built in. Um but I'm going to ask you this, and I, I, I've been really weary of this question. Who was the last person that Sonya Deville had a problem with? Uh, Mandy Rose, I think. But before that, the person she she refused to let wrestle was? Naomi? Na- oh, well, yeah, yeah, Naomi, yeah. Okay. I'm afraid that they, this could become a racial. Oh, God. They won't These, dare. They wouldn't they dare. Won't dare. They, w- they wouldn't dare, but I'm afraid that some group might say it is oh, out God. there like, well, she's only had a problem with this one, or why is she coming out of retirement only to face a, an African-American female champion? Can you see something silly like that happening? Oh, Lord. Because in this day and age, there can always be someone who takes one thing wrong. Um, and honestly, if DeVille hasn't improved from when she was wrestling as an active wrestler and – if Bianca still does the same moves that she always does, we're not going to get a great match. Now, if Sonya has improved and Bianca is holding back some, some cool stuff for a bigger match, like she does like at WrestleManias and SummerSlams, then yes, we're going to get something really cool. And that's that's kind of like where I hope it goes. But then is Sonya going to step out of that role forever? They can't. Anybody that claims, a, if somebody pulls a racial card and tries to racialize this, Number one, I would look at I would look at them and say, you know, Bianca Belair has been 
He, she was in the main event of last year's WrestleMania, had the best match on the card at WrestleMania this year, and is currently a Raw Women's Champion. So, I mean, the, the racial card would not hold water for two seconds in this story. But somebody somebody might try in this extremely well, racialized, you, everything's about race, look at the color of my skin yeah. world. I get it. Yeah, it, somebody probably will, but it, it, there's there's no legs to stand on. I don't think it would gain any, mo- any momentum. But uh, as far as Sonya Deville's ability, I think that Sonya Deville has – a lot to offer. She's really good on the mic. I got to say, like Sonya Deville on the microphone, especially when she went into that program with Mandy Rose a couple of years ago with Otis and that whole love triangle thing, and she ended up trying to screw oh, over uh, Mandy Rose. She actually showed something on the mic that you didn't see forever. Before that, she was coming out as kind of this like MMA wannabe boxer. You yeah. know, that, that's all you knew. And then all of a sudden, she cuts this A plus promo, and you're like, "Holy crap, where's this been?" And she inexplicably became this uh, authority figure. No one tells you why or how. By the way, like how the hell did she become a WWE official? How did that happen? No one. It, we all just were supposed to accept it. And then uh, she's now still an official, but also competing. Um, very weird there. But um, as far as in the ring, I, I don't have any concern about her in the ring. I think she'll be fine to good. And I think her promos are what's going to sell this because both Bianca and Sonya, I think, are very good on the microphone. So the promos on this are going to be very a, a lot of fun. And I think Sonya has played the heel character very well. So I'm looking forward to this, honestly. Well, the, the only other person I thought, that if they were going to try to have a trick up their sleeve, uh, might have been might have been and fingers crossed because I'd love to see it, and I think it would be an awesome program, would be prayers a returning Paige because mm. Paige has also played that role of the general manager. And so it could be a very interesting storyline if Paige could get her job back if she could beat Bianca, which then she would lose, but it would be a great match. We, I think that would be just amazing. And then you could go on where Bianca can face another competitor. It could, it could be a dual thing where Sonya is basically feeding Bianca really good talent but really, she's also feuding with Paige. You, can, you could have a good duality there and fill two really great segments on the show instead of uh, what could be potentially Gaga, especially when she was talking about all the great superstars that she could wrestle and throw his do drop in there. And I was like, what? Yeah, dude. Are you just yeah. naming? Are you just naming the women's roster? How about you name the top tier, then the second tier? I was also kind of hoping it was Bailey, but you know, wishes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that uh, Bianca Belair has a lot of women that she could work with, I have to say. I mean, like, especially, yeah. um, you know, given that she just won the belt, yeah, Becky could have a rematch. You know that that's a, a shoe in for a great match. I, I think Sonya, or rather, Belair is going to hold that belt probably through SummerSlam, maybe beyond. I think she's going to have a longer run than the last time she won it last year at WrestleMania, which went from Mania to SummerSlam, where Becky returned, and we all know what happened there. So, okay. RK Bro then defeated Alpha Academy. Randy hit Chad Gable with the RKO. Um, not a whole lot of, not much to say here, other than Alpha Academy continues to lose, which I'm not a big fan of because I do like Alpha Academy a lot. Uh, but uh, any thoughts on this at all? <laughs> well, you, you've got Mini Kurt Angle and uh, and Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, <laughs> and uh, they they do great wrestling though. They are great. I just wish they could stop with the Otis stance and the mean face, just there are other ways to get it across. I, I prefer he had no expression uh, so I could buy into him a little bit more. You can keep the stance if you have to, but just go to like no expression. I would, I, I think that would be better for us buying into it. I don't like the shush thing. It's just so childish. I get it that you think we, you know, we all forgot about uh, Chris Nowinski, but we didn't, we get how you're trying to squash he and Kurt Angle into one character and, and just make Chad Gable that especially with all of his facial characteristics looking more and more like Kurt Angle. It's just so funny. It's that that's really funny to me. The match is a match. We've seen it a million times. We're going nowhere with that. We're spinning wheels. It gets down to a conduit of what's going to be the next match. And we all know that or the setup, which is Street Profits, Usos, Alpha Academy, of course, are the big losers in this one. They're off screen and going to the back, hitting the showers on the way to the hotel while the rest of the guys are trying to figure out who's going to be the spotlight. Now, I kind of like the fact that we're using tag teams at the top of the card now. Okay, so let's have more real tag teams and not just singles wrestlers put together. So the two real tag teams in this, of course, the Usos and the Street Profits, until they split up Montez and Ford, which mm, that's another one that I don't see happening anytime soon. And if they do it, I think that could be more detrimental if they do it within the next couple of years than it will be um, 
positive, and and I'll explain that in a second. But getting down to it, first of all, um, the Usos, of course, they're going to show up. They're going to do their Uso thing. They're going to cut their goofy promos. They're very exposed. They're becoming quickly as as boring on my TV as um, as the New Day are when it comes to cutting promos and watching them do anything but wrestle. Once they wrestle, I love watching the Usos wrestle, but I can't stand their promo time. I can't stand their goofiness. It's not goofiness. It's like it's so forced scripted tough guy stuff. Look how tough I am. I grit my teeth. Look how tough I am. I did a neck twitch and looked at the camera like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. It, they're not great actors. They don't have great ring presence when cutting promos. Okay. And being Roman's cousin is only going to go so far in the grand scheme of things. It's worked out really well right now. But I, you take Roman out, what happens to them? We've seen it happen. Flounder. Um, with it being said, okay, the RK bro thing, I, I think you and I are both blown away it's lasted this long um i i I really just can't fathom how how it still has legs and now they're like best friends i i really thought that there was going to be turn eventually there is going to be turn unless somebody gets injured and disappears um and then on the other side of it okay so we're going to unify all the titles well that's what happens when you cut 75 percent of your roster especially people who had momentum and the other ones who had a lot of potential and were awesome instead you're stuck with the same people that you had from for many years and you're recycling matches well i I got this great idea let's unify everything you did it before three times now or this is the third time so sorry it's a little wordy but getting around to it um i i see the usos getting this whole thing at the end of it the usos are going to be the victors um rk bro will split up eventually from this i think and uh end result is they'll tease uh Ford and Dawkins splitting, but they won't, and they'll go on to probably an elongated tag feud with the Usos. And it's just gonna be one of those where the promos kill us but the wrestling makes us happy. <laughs> that's that's the one thing you got looking forward to it. If you don't like the promos, the wrestling is guaranteed to be really good. Guaranteed. I mean there's nothing there's no combination that you could put together for these four teams that would be bad. They're all very good. Is Otis the odd man out because of his size? I mean, yeah, he doesn't fit the other the others' uh, body types and the way he wrestles. But outside of that, I mean, look, th- these are four teams that are that are just top tier. And the unification yes. match between RK Bro and, and the Usos is going to be a lot of fun. I do believe the Usos are going to be coming out victorious, so that the uh, bloodline holds all the gold, or at least all the gold except for the United States Championship, the Intercontinental Championship of course, in the women's belts and the NXT championship, but they'll try to force that narrative on us that they're holding all the gold. Uh, maybe they eventually will. I mean, hell, maybe they have somehow do absorb the U.S. and Intercontinental title. I mean, who knows? But uh, I think that the Usos will get that victory, which, as you said, will lead to finally the split with RK Bro that we've been waiting on for almost a year now, it feels like, of this uh, of this program. But, uh, to, to you know, admittedly, they've been good together. They've sold a lot of merchandise they've had chemistry that no one thought they would have and i think it's time though like i mean they're 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 close to overstaying their welcome for a split they're getting there and i think that they will get there once they drop the belts to the usos probably at wrestlemania backlash so as far as the match goes with the usos and the street profits on raw though i i mean it was fine really i mean good to, to really good it, it, uh, the usos hit 1d on montez ford and uh, the uh, usos then take out Orton who RKO'd uh he, he RKO'd Montez Ford I think and then the Usos took advantage of a distracted Randy Orton to stand tall after double super kicking Randy Orton and they closed the show holding the belts all four belts up so uh, any thoughts on that before we close things hey, out here it's 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 a classic belt segment see who gets more cheers by holding your belt higher uh you know I mean Honestly, we all know that the best best case of that was when Punk outdid Cena with it, holding his belt higher and everybody turning on Cena, Cena acting surprised. When you get a little long in the tooth, that's what happens. Um, as far as this goes, though, like I said, the winner in all this is going to be us by watching the matches. Um, I, I see an elongated program with the Street Profits because Street Profits are in one of those situations where – Either they're forced down your throat and overexposed, and they're on like two or three segments a night, and you're like, come on, man, you're killing me. Or they disappear off your TV for like two months for no good reason. And it'll be like relegated to main event, and you're like, what? who are the street? What? 
are they still signed? So you, you, you have to have like, uh, to me, like, okay, the best way I can put that is we're going to have a great match from at least three of these teams. I, I unfortunately feel that Alpha Academy is going to get washed out in this one. I think that that was their shot. And then there'll be like a number one contender or the outsider looking in on everything or the, the, the person to cause RK Bro a loss. Um, and that's that. That's where it disintegrates because you know that that'll cause the dissension. So they'll keep their 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 part out of the spotlight by sticking their hand in the ring and causing a trip or something like that. Um, and then yes, Uso is going to hold all the all the gold, and well, the bloodline will hold all the gold. And uh, then they're going to really fast try to figure out how they're going to find opponents for all these people. Uh, now they built one, you know, the only dominant faction they can put put against them. That would have a prayer they broke up a long time ago, and that was the Hurt Business. And that would make sense. I'd love to see the Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin and uh, Cedric Alexander interjected. Could you imagine that team? Mm. That uh, They are so incredibly good. And and I buy them as a team. I don't buy them as two singles wrestlers, even though they are. Um, Benjamin started out as a tag team wrestler, and C- Cedric Alexander could do anything you ask him to. They they work so well as a team, and that would that's the missing piece of this puzzle. If you're going to do a big turmoil or anything like that, or it'd be a great way to reintroduce them if they're looking for number one contenders to have a tournament, a real tournament, not two matches here. Then oh, we forgot about these winners that we aired on main event that only aired in Zimbabwe this week. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. I want like a real like tournament. You could even have a raw dedicated to it with maybe two singles matches at the end, but it would give us something to distract us of the fact that you don't have a main event planned for your world universal title. So this is a good way to, to reinvent and um, reestablish, which is a very key word, folks, reestablish the meanings and the credibilities of the undertitles and the tag titles. Absolutely. And well said. I, I I think that this this is like you said, it's a no lose situation when it comes to the matches. We all I think know RK Bro is about to break up, uh, and the Usos are gonna grab the belts and the uh, the bloodline's gonna get even stronger with more gold and eventually that's gonna all collapse in on itself too. But uh, that's a conversation that is probably many months away, unfortunately, for those that want to see the yes. bloodline dis, dis, uh, yeah. descent. So um all right, well very good. Uh, any other thoughts or final questions? before uh, you wrap it up or any shout outs well definitely some shout outs i want to say happy birthday to one of my oldest friends in life his name is michael elwood um he's doing really well for himself living a great life with his wife and his his daughters and um just a real close friend and i I love the guy with my heart i mean old roommate uh he knows a lot about wrestling because he lived with me for a long time and he was forced to learn a lot about wrestling uh whether you wanted to or not yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I did a, did a tour to in, in Afghanistan, retired Marine, great guy. Um, and he's he's like a brother to me. I want to shout out to him. I want to say uh, good night, rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey. Because uh, as we're recording this, we found out that, of course, he passed away. Um, uh, a little coffee shop here in Louisville called Synergo's Coffee over on Speed Avenue or Speed Street. Uh, place is amazing. They have a white chocolate mocha to die for. I'm not a big uh, frilly, sweet coffee kind of person, but they make the most perfect coffee, the, the most perfect white mocha I've ever had in my life. So I'm giving them a big shout out. And uh, to all anybody who loves it when I'm on the show, especially like Miller and, uh, of course, DJ Kuzma, we all love that guy. Who does not love him? And, um, of course, a, a longtime friend of mine in real life, our good old Memphis Mark, I mean – which, you know, if you're ever watching American Pickers, you ever see the episode he's on, just watch the old Memphis episode. And Memphis Mark's on there. It's, it's pretty pretty funny. But, um, yeah, aside from that, um, you know, just thank you for having me on the show. I've missed everybody. I'm working on some stuff. I've got an idea for a segment I'm trying to put together. Uh, folks don't know I'm just technologically backwards, and I don't know how to record right for podcasts, but I'm working on that. I've been working on it for a long time and working a lot. Stuff Matt knows that you don't know. But I'm working on something, and I'm just going to spoil it for everybody and tell you about why the Monday Night Wars uh, worked and why we will never have wrestling ratings the way we did before. And it's it's very in-depth. It doesn't blame anything on the writing um, and the the product going PG. Um, I, I talk about the advances in technology, and I talk about um, just how, how everything's evolved and why 
things are the way they are and we'll why we'll probably never see a four million viewer rating again it's very interesting i've scripted i've talked to a lot of people who know and eat sleep wrestling like i do so um i'm working on it and once i get it done hopefully with matt's blessing we can publish it and put it up for everybody to listen to i really looking forward to that because you're taking away some of the very easy easy excuses for that rating never happening again of like you said the writing which people would blame it on or oh it's a tv rating those easy things that you said right off the bat that you're not going to be using as as reasons for that rating never happening again is pretty cool because now it's like well whoa what could it be right so that's a good hook and i like how you're you're diving deeper than just surface level on this. So this is going to be a, a great listen. And I, I promise you guys, as soon as it's sent to me, I will, uh, I'll get it up for everyone to listen to. So, uh, this has been a, a lot of fun. It's been way too long. I know you're busy as, as hell with, uh, your, your job. Uh, you're yes. working you know, 80 hour weeks. I mean, I, I, I'm busy in my own right with everything else I got going on, but we're going to have to, uh, we're going to definitely have to hook up in, in, in short order again. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll somehow find an hour or so to, uh, reconnect. <laughs> yes. Hopefully not SummerSlam, maybe sooner than that, but, uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Awesome. And uh, as always, I think I said it before, but at 144 Captain on uh, Twitter, find me. You want to talk wrestling? I'm always game. Always. That's true. That's a fact. That's a verifiable fact. Yes. So, all right. Very good, buddy. Uh, I will be talking to you soon and uh, try to get some sleep. Don't work too hard. <laughs> all right. Thanks. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for listening to the WWE podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time